I'm just gonna... yeah. Hi, welcome to Scythe's Backlog, a series where I play through my backlog of games and talk about them. Today, we're taking a look at Minute, a game made by JW, Kitty, Juku and Don, published by Devolver Digital and released on April 3rd, 2018. Let's begin. In this game, you play as this uh, duck head with legs. You're thrown right into the game without any introduction. So without any direction, you start exploring. You're blocked off from exploring past a few screens by these plants. So eventually you find your way to the shore here and pick up the sword. Immediately a timer of 60 seconds starts ticking in the upper left and we start running. We destroy the plants to our left, destroy this boat, stumble upon this lighthouse and the old lighthouse keeper. And look at this, it talks so slow. Speak faster old man, we're in a hurry here. He starts talking about some treasure but gets cut off by the timer as we die. We respawn back at the house, run back, and now we have to listen to it again. It tells us to swim west of here, and to head south from the little rock. Remember this for later. Next up we enter a small cafe, and the barista asks me to get rid of some crabs. Sure, I have nothing else to do. I walk outside, and accidentally swing my sword at this uh, dog person with an eye patch. He retaliates, and I die. Well, time to hunt some crabs. While getting rid of crabs, we run into this guy, who seemed to know about the sword. He calls it cursed, and tells us to drop by the factory, ASAP. I have not found a factory yet, so I ignore him. After we're done getting rid of the crabs, we go back in and is rewarded with coffee. We can now push boxes. We walk north and find a key behind some boxes, but time's up. Okay, let's pause a minute here. We need to talk about time travel. What's actually happening when we die? Well, there's three options that I can think of. First option is a Groundhog Day type of situation, where you go back 60 seconds in time when you die. You do keep items found though, but maybe it's more of a time bubble, where everything on you comes with you. But no, because progress in the world stays, so this can't be it. Maybe it's not time travel at all. We could simply be respawning at the checkpoint, but all the plants and enemies respawn, so that can't be it either. The last option I have is a quote from an old wise man. Shit's magic, yo. And while that's a boring answer, that's probably it. Anyway, back to the video. I run back and collect the lighthouse key. I of course then enter the lighthouse and collect the flashlight. I've not seen any dark areas yet, but sure. Next. We run by this dude and find a watering can. Now we can only carry one usable item at a time, but once we've found one, they will spawn next to us when we die. Anyway, we pick the sword back up and continue exploring. We run north of our house, go through some snake cave, past an angry bull, through some shallow water, and found some dude telling us that the sword throwing oasis ghost is just a rumor. Okay. Next time we try going right instead and end up at a caravan that acts like our second checkpoint. If we die now we'll respawn here. Over to the right we find a sneaker shop that will sell us some shoes for 7 coins. However we have none so I hit him and run away. In the dumpster outside we find our first coin. Next to the parking lot, we find this hidden entrance with another coin in it, but otherwise a dead end. We spawn back at the caravan and head into the desert instead. Secret temple sounds interesting. Inside the temple we are greeted with four paths. To the north we have a door with a skull on it. To the west we find an octopus who wants us to find his missing tentacles. 
To the east, we have unpassable fire. To the south, we have a really long corridor. And I mean really long. We die halfway through and run back as fast as possible to try again, but we're too slow to get to the end. Okay, let's see who this lost person is. Looks like she wants some water. Well, one screen over, there is some. But maybe she doesn't want ocean water. Here we also find one of the octopus's tentacles. So, grab the watering can from outside the caravan, run back and pour some water on her. She says to meet her at the sign marker. I run over there and she tells me to grab an item and meet her at her boat. We run down some stairs and get the gardening gloves that gives us the ability to cut down trees. Now, the boat she's talking about is the small rowboat next to the lighthouse. So we make our way back there and she tells us she needs some boat wood to fix her boat. There's apparently only one tree that will work and it grows close to snakes. Now in the search for the tree we stumble across this hotel, accessed by cutting down some trees north of the cafe, and it acts like our third checkpoint. We walk over to the right and find a retracted bridge to the factory and some sort of mine. But it looked like a dead end, so we go back the way we came. This time, we go north from the hotel instead and get ambushed by these guys, or to cut down a tree and run away. Here's some dude that lost his credit card. Let's keep an eye out for that. Next up, we find a graveyard with a bone we can pick up that acts like a sword. I don't see the point of it and move on to find this creepy old house with a repeating staircase and a TV displaying weird messages. Nope. Next, we find these trees. If you have a good eye, you can see something running between them. We start cutting the trees down and he comes out and tells us he'll hide at the hotel instead. Alright, now I didn't know this at the time but you're supposed to gather all the hotel guests back at the hotel so that the hotel manager unlocks the roof. The manager tells us that people kept hiding under crates and I did spot a moving crate before. So we run back there and push over the crate. That's two guests found. Next he tells me a guest lost their wallet. But instead we continue searching for the boatwood. Our search has led us to wander the endless desert somehow, and we accidentally stumble across the oasis that one dude was talking about. The ghost tells us to leave the plants alone, so of course the first thing we do is attack the plants. The ghost retaliates by throwing swords around him, but it goes down and we get the sword thrower upgrade. Now this isn't the only weird thing I found in the desert, but more on that later. On the way back to the starting area, I got tired of the bull chasing me, so I got rid of him, and he gave me a heart. Now, this tunnel has a lot of snakes in it. And didn't the boat lady say something about snakes? Sure enough, next to the snake tunnel we found our boatwood. We make our way back to the boat and she tells us to come back later when the boat is done. Having nothing better to do, I start hitting stuff and stumble upon a hidden tunnel. But it looks like a dead end for now. We make our way back to the boat once again and we take off. On our way we find another tentacle and arrive at a small island. We walk inside the house and find our third checkpoint. Now, this palm tree looked a bit suspicious, and sure enough, there's a key at the top. With the basement key, we find some sort of broken power generator. Our goal now is to get three power stations working again. West, east and south. We start by going right. And after a submarine ride, we find this teleporter room. Of some trial and error, we arrive here, a dead end. So we try again and find our way to the generator. Hit the screw and we're done with East Station. Next, we go to the west by pushing a box to make a bridge and find one of these puzzles. Now, the puzzle master that I am, I start hitting the screws at random until it solves itself. And that's West Station done. 
The last station is down south, so we push the box down this time and find more screws. Now we just need to hit them in the right order, and that's all the stations done. We walk back to the generator in the basement, and it has activated a teleporter for us to take us back to the starting house. This makes it a lot easier to travel around the world. This basement also functions as a progression tracker. After a bit of exploring, we find ourselves back at the abandoned house. We start walking up the endless staircase when something catches my eye. Something about right floor? I try to find it again, and sure enough, this is the right floor, Mary. We walk out, and there's a ghost here now who tells us they now will haunt me with hints. What this means is that a lot of the skeleton piles around the world now has a ghost on it that gives hints. Now most of these hints are very cryptic and I never understood what they meant. Fiends dressed in woods be defeated for goods. Where you treat your feet the rocks won't meet. When stuck in the sand patience helps a hand. Okay? Anyway, the time has come to gather all the hotel guests. First up, the guy who lost his wallet. You have to push him around while he tells you if you're getting close. We finally get there and we go back for our next hint. He tells us that someone can't stay underwater forever. We start looking around and we find this hidden passage to another heart. After a bit of exploring we find this. Some dude snorkeling in the pond. I try pouring some water down his pipe but that doesn't work. So we wait. With 10 seconds left on the clock he emerges and goes back to the hotel. The next guy has got himself involved with some bandits. We walk up to them and sure enough, one of them looks a bit more scared than the others. We get rid of the others and he goes back to the hotel. The last guy is on the other side of the retracted bridge and we need to find a way across. We walk down to the mine again and this time after exploding some bombs. We found ourselves on the other side of the bridge. We pull some levers to activate the bridge and it goes back to the hotel. The manager lowers a ladder to the roof. And we get the flippers. We cannot swim. However, if we swim in toxic water, we take damage. With this upgrade, the world really opens up. First we go back to the old man. You remember what he said, right? Well. Luckily I did. Swim west of the lighthouse and go south at a small rock. Here we find a small island with a coin, a tentacle and a ghost telling us about a coin behind a waterfall. Next we go take a look inside the factory's main entrance. But there's nothing here except a long line to give complaints. So we move on and continue to explore. We find a coin here. coin under the waterfall here. And over here we find a camera. With this camera you can supposedly take pictures and look at them online at your personal URL. But I could not get the page to load. Now we go back to this area that is no longer a dead end. And find a back entrance to the factory. Inside we find a sword making machine, and after hitting a few levers this part of the machine shuts down. After some more exploring we find another tentacle and a dude from earlier telling us that the whole factory is getting cursed and we need to save them. Our goal now is to shut down the factory from the inside. We find the guy running the machine, but hitting him does nothing, so we continue to explore the factory. We found our way to the bottom of this screen and hit this generator that controls the lasers blocking us. And that allows us to come down here, where the finished swords ends up. Here we find a guy telling us to shut down the other side of the factory. We go to the other part of the machine, push a few boxes into the gears and it shuts down. We go back down here, and now he tells us to put our sword into the machine. And that causes it to start burning. Now for some reason we need to put the fire out. But the time is up and I end up back at the hotel, with a watering can in hand and no sword. So now with the watering can, we can just walk back and put the fire out, right? Wrong. 
when we try to go back down, these oil lamps block us, and without the sword, we can't smash them. Now, the first thing I think of is that we need to get the bone from the graveyard to get through, since that is the only other weapon I've found, but we get blocked by the trees. Without a sword, the world gets very limited, and at first I thought I was missing an item to get through. There's still a few places I have not finished. We make our way back to the secret temple, and put the fire out with a watering can, and make our way through this bat gauntlet, only to be blocked by a door with a heart on it. But of course, Puzzle Master Scythe figures out that we need to get here without taking damage on the way. So a few tries later we get through, only to find a coin on the other side. While this doesn't help us with the factory, it does put us at the required 7 coins for the shoes. We buy the shoes and run back to the temple. Go through the long corridor, only to find another heart. Now that we have the shoes, we are fast enough to take the long way around and end up back at the machine. We pour some water on it and pick up our sword again. The machine has powered it up and is now called Mega Sword. With our now improved sword, we can destroy the main part of the machine. All the swords get absorbed into the foreman, and the final battle begins. Now, before we beat this guy and finish the game, there's some things left to do, so let's rewind a bit. First off, let's gather all the tentacles to see what the octopus gives us. For our fifth tentacle we need to push this box into the water to be able to reach it. Our sixth tentacle is in a room right next to the octopus. The seventh is down in the sewers next to the cafe. We have to run between these boxes and not be eaten by a shark that swims around here. The last one is back at the teleporter room on the island. We make our way back to the octopus and it gives us the turbo ink. The turbo ink makes us swing faster, and look at this. Ridiculous. The last thing I want to show is what I found in the desert. This is recorded after the boss and I was screwing around with the game. I put on a sheet to freeze the timer so I could explore the desert more. And after about 2 minutes of walking I came upon this. I have no idea what this could mean. Subscribe? I tried looking it up, but it seems no one else has found this before. If you go one screen over, we also find this. Smash like? Of course I try to hit the like with my sword, but it just kills me. If someone has any idea what this could mean, please let me know. Anyway, back to the ball of swords. In the first phase of the fight, we need to hit all these glowing swords around him. After that's done, we need to chase the glowing swords around the room until they're all gone. Next, he starts spinning these massive swords around him, but I found out you can just stay at the distance with your sword, swinging, and they go down easy. Then we just hit them a final time, the sword breaks, and he explodes. We're put back in the now silent factory. Walk over to the toilet and flush down our broken sword. And that's minute! Now, there is a new game plus mode, where the items in the world are moved around a bit, and you get 40 seconds per life instead of 60. We could also go back in before we beat the boss and try collecting all the coins, but I couldn't be bothered. The game gets 3 out of 5 cursed swords. Thanks for watching.